Welcome back to another episode of Breaking the Line. I'm Samuel. And I'm Charlton. And today, as always, we're taking a deep dive into the arts of mime and choreography. What do we got from today, Charlton? So today we are delving deep into the song, Different Drum. Different Drum. I'm gonna left, right, left. Why was this? I, don't know. <laughs> I, I can't even interrupt you like that. It's just wrong. <laughs> I, so, fun fact: I often get a lot of lyrics wrong. This is uh, not new to if, anybody who's actually watching this knows that this is the case. So, <laughs> I have no idea what the lyrics say to this song. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna march to the beat of a different, a different drum. drum. We're gonna we do our left, right, left. That's the, that's the part I was singing: left, right, left. That, I just jumped in. You know what? Forget it. Okay, so that's the bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what stats do we have on this song? Yes, so this is a song that was written by Ginger and Jacob Robeson. Ginger was the director of the Truth in Action team, and Jacob was her son, the oldest. Um, now, what's really funny about like Ginger and Jacob's type of uh, choreography, like I, I talk about mm-hmm. how people have their, style. Own, have their own fingerprints, their own mm-hmm. style. Is that uh, Jake and Ginger tend to do like more upbeat, dancey type songs because yep. Ginger has a lot of like theater background and uh, it really like pours into whenever she was choreographing mime songs. And then Jacob just likes dance. And so a lot of dance ends up getting part into that. So yep. it is, like it's really funny to watch any of the songs that they've choreographed because it's always like really upbeat, really dancey. Oh, yeah. Super fun song. So, love love mm-hmm. doing it at Mime Camp 2017. Okay. Yep. All yep. right. Shall we get into it? I suppose. Are we going to do something different today? Are we going to march to the beat of a different drum? Somehow I knew it was going that direction, and yet I still couldn't predict it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So fun fact, the person who is closest to the girl there in the center is actually Kaylee. She was the latest director of the Truth in Action team. And here she is, it's just a month. Yep. Nope, super fun uh, choreography. Whenever you have a moment where everyone's getting to do the same thing, Yep, yeah, this one was very like cue oriented, but it made it look really good when everything was like orderly and in in kind of in unison and sync and all that. It right. gave it a really cool effect, even though it, this is honestly a rather simple song. Right, but it also uh, so everyone does the same thing except for one, so it highlights the one person being different. Yeah, so like yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of crowd, but even so. This one person can get highlighted in the midst of all the chaos. Well, and the pr- small thing of those two people, Kaylee being one of them there, looking to the side, you know, mm-hmm. noticing and wanting to hop into the song. It's a classic example of what we call a uh, join-in song. Yeah. One person starts it being different, everyone hops in. <laughs> yep, gradually. And, like, the join-in type songs are a type of progression. Like, we talk about how Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 need to have, like, a sense of progression and not just do the same thing over and over. And while they are doing like the same dance they expand it to more and more people right and that kind of is the keep, point of the song right keep things moving yep. another fun moment of uh, just taking what would be boring work and people sharing food nice example of what it would look be like to be different mm-hmm. we'll talk about it in the like theology is part of it but part of the the benefit of being different would be yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like the little typewriter <laughs> There's a bunch of little things in this song. I was to say, do you like think that. any of the young people actually know that, like, that's how you change the next Oh, set? probably not. Right. Like, probably people were thinking, like, you slap the monitor or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love, I love the little, like, I guess we can do this. <laughs> yeah. Also, I would like to rant as the editor of many videos. Mm-hmm. This one was super difficult to edit as a video because the you'll see like a bunch of quality changes and like how you see how it changed there because we had two different camera angles and neither one of them just did a wide angle. Both right. of them decided like right here I had to zoom in really close this because is what they we were call following the, uh, the hero cam the hero cam where you're following the one person as opposed to like getting it to see everything, which was more beneficial for like learning the song the zooming mm-hmm. out angle and seeing all of it oh, that's a nice fun set piece yeah. Yeah. so you can see that person doing the control and then moving out uh i don't know if we have a name for this trope yet but i do love it when people on the stage break out into the audience yeah. and so it fills the entire room with the the aspect of it yep yeah, it's kind of like a this is an example of breaking the fourth wall in mind is literally going into the audience because you could say the fourth wall is like where the line between the audience and the and the actors. Well, this is literally going through that and going into the audience. Okay, right, there's no wall anymore. This is the environmental stage. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
I think I'm, a, I'm in there. I was in that little crowd. Oh, I didn't somewhere. know you were in this song. <laughs> what do you know? I was in this song. I didn't even know I was in this song. <laughs> All right, so that's the song. Let's get into the purpose and message. What would you say the purpose and message of the song are? Yes, yeah, so this one is like, it's a very simple song. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel like it's breaking any like huge bounds or anything like that, but it's upbeat and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an example of a song like we've talked about how, you know, where I'd place this in the uh, presentation. This is the type of song I would put at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So these are the type of songs that are like attention grabbing, the, yep. like with, the, with it being dance, with it being upbeat and exciting music. Like those are the ones that get the crowd on your side. If you're, you know, you're presenting in public, People, you know, that that's the song that, that kind of catches people's attention, draws them in. Or if you're doing like a fixed presentation, these are the kinds of ones that people are getting ready. They're like, oh, we're excited to see mimes, you know, and that kind of eases them into, you know, when you when you just crush their hopes and dreams with, <laughs> with fight inside at the end. you know, <laughs> Right before you get into the, the messiness of sin and gospel and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. But it, it's a good message of the song and the fact that like you're trying to get people to stop let's say to like a public outreach so its purpose is to draw people's attention and say hey there's something different happening here uh one there's mimes on stage which is still like relatively novel there's not a ton of mimes if you do see them they're normally people that just stand still but no we've got lots of fun dance music happy things happening and then i would love for whoever after the song happens if a speaker comes up while you're transitioning to say something about like there's a difference uh in the way that the Christian life would look and that just kind of saying what what we mean by when we say we're marching to the beat of a different drum how we have Jesus as the person who defines what our life looks like kind of thing so transitioning into kind of your gospel message of your song yep so part of the message is that um you know you march to the beat of a different drum like you just said and how what that looks like in the Christian life as opposed and and makes us different as opposed to the being the, like the world we are called to be different and what does that look like and so with this you know it's just not fitting in it's a very like this is a message that i feel like isn't inherently christian so this is a message that you could do if you know you're banned from presenting the gospel for mm-hmm. whatever reason because i know there are certain things like going to if you were to do a public school i've mm-hmm. known a, i've done public school presentations before and they've basically said you can't do right. overtly gospel things so we kind of just do not exactly gospel but <laughs> we, <laughs> we kind of fit around in it right it's still a fun song nobody's probably going to complain about this exact piece yeah but you can use it as a launching pad hopefully as you're talking to people individually yeah right exactly yeah moving on to the praise part of why i like about this song as an introductory song is it doesn't get into anything one specific way in which we are marching differently or living differently than the world but instead it has a generic sense of like the boring and the mundane aspects of life so while there's nothing inherently wrong about like boring work there seems to be in people's like heart and mind this idea of uh there there's a bigger purpose to life there's something that's more beyond just the the mundane parts so if we can appeal to like yeah there's something more let me let me show you that that i think is a good part to this message other praiseworthy things you'd give yeah so one of the things that i would say is like as we're you know as we're talking about the like what that looks like to be different in christian circles and stuff the way that this depicts it i feel like like you said it's generic enough but um it also paints the the boring and the mundane as acceptable Mm -hmm. because like for example she doesn't like stop going to work or whatever Mm -hmm. she just goes to work and marches to the beat of her own drum like she still does the same things everybody else does she just does it with joy and you know that Mm -hmm. she kind of brings people along with her in you know sort of a discipleship way if you you might think of it that way Uh, it's a little stretch but yeah (laughs) i mean as that whole friendship evangelism feel where like oh that person's living life in a different way what makes them different it doesn't it's short right like oh they're living different that sounds fun so it it could be shallow in some ways of like oh that looks fun as opposed to like oh that living that person's living joyfully in the face of circumstances but it's not that serious a song those those come later (laughs) (laughs) right so another thing I was going to say for praise is the, like we mentioned before, the fourth wall breaking. Mm-hmm. That is something I really like. Um, now it's kind of like it, you got to use it correctly. Mm-hmm. Can't use it every song. You can't, can't use, use it every, every set list. <laughs> yep. Now this being a song for like the beginning, it is kind of a difficult one because like usually when you go into the audience and stuff, it's more impactful. Like it more mm-hmm. like literally reaches out into the audience. And those are good ones to do for like the end of for the end of a set list. Now, this one does it. It's fine. 
but they like go into the audience and they go back up on stage. It's kind of exciting. People are going around. So Mm -hmm. like you got to use it sparingly, use it correctly. But ultimately it's, I I could also see that as they go out to the audience, if you see that there's somebody who kind of maybe was walking by your presentation was on the fringe, but like as soon as the music stops, they'll most likely just keep walking. If you intentionally go to that person and like dance with them. So even this is a little bit more improv but instead of just doing the choreography that if you can like get them to do the thing that you're like trying to entice them on a personal level hopefully that will be the next step for them to actually like hey i actually want to watch this let me come in you know further that personal appeal is always good yeah i think that, i think that's very true all right uh critiques you might give to the song uh, obviously it's a little bit more on the dancey side so the critiques look a little different uh, i mean i wouldn't critique necessarily the choreography itself i have no problem with it there but critiques you might give to maybe thinking through the staging the progression of the song or other parts of the message yeah i think the the biggest critique that i would give honestly is the message is very simple and so like this is a thing that i've done before and that i'll say it again is a praise is that it's simple a critique Critique is that that it's simple simple. (laughs) and because of its simplicity like this isn't a song that i would like this this one has to be in every single uh, set list because you gotta you gotta get the message like this is such an important song it's right like, no but it's a fun song like i'd say sure you can use it and then it'd be great i'd almost but say if you have simple. a song like this you only really need one per session for like time you know forever however whatever team you're going to teach uh, and then the next year when you're going to go back to let's say the same venue you have a different song that's just like it so in some ways this is this isn't a really bad critique it's similar to a lot of other type of tropes that it follows that it doesn't really stand out from other tropes, but intentionally so. And so when you're doing, I don't know, picking whatever 10, 20 songs you want to do for your session, picking one of these is really good. And then intentionally changing it the next year is good so that people don't feel like you're doing the same thing or a same cool dance song over and over again. Right. There's a lot of songs that are similar to this and rightfully so. So it's almost a critique in its simplicity or it doesn't stand out in any crazy way other than like, yeah, you should do this song and then do another one next year. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I call these types of songs celebratory songs. Mm-hmm. So these are these like upbeat, like the the fun sign language type of songs, the dance songs, the upbeat, exciting choreography that doesn't really give the best message, but it gets people's attention. That's kind of the, the celebratory song to get that terminology out there. Yep. Uh, I, I do have a problem with a lot of these types of songs where the bridge tends to be a little throwaway, right? We've progressed to like one to two to five to I think it jumps to a couple of different people at the end. And then you got like five people left and during the whole bridge, it just feels like, eh, we're having fun. It's not bad, but it's just kind of like a throwaway, not intentional part of the set piece. Um, so you get to the really cool moment. <laughs> Pretty much. So I, I feel like you just want to make sure each part's intentional and has a development of that story. So maybe those five people are, ex- I don't know especially grumpy or have a, a motive to them. <laughs> You're super grumps. I don't know. It Obviously, it's a simple song and you're not trying to get too carried away in the character mm-hmm. tropes of it, but something to be like, oh, why didn't they join in at this point that you have like a whole mob? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Anything on the theology of the song? So as I kind of mentioned before, the biggest theological issue that I would credit to the song is that it's not inherently Christian. Like this is a generic message that could apply to the world as equally as it could apply to Christianity. Now, right. granted, you could argue that a lot of like this type of thought originated with Christianity, mm-hmm. or you could argue that, you know, it's maybe Socratic or Aristotelian, but like one way or another, when you think about this type of, you know, doing your own thing, being your own type of person, when you kind of do things according to like different from what the world is, but according to some generic set of rules, like these are, that's kind of like where it tends to land. It feels just kind of whatever right if, yeah if you feel my, no because you could do it on the the disney you know trope side of things of like be your own self like let it go kind of moment uh and then we'd say it's like well it's not necessarily a good or bad thing or you know it could be lead to bad things of like following your own heart and dreams because the heart's like wicked but if it's on the other side of like don't do what everyone else is doing and follow what i don't know god is leading you to do or something but both of those are kind of wrapped up into this under the banner of just trying to be really simple. And so I would almost want a way for the gospel to be a little bit clear. Like instead of the person just being different, give them a Bible at the beginning, call it, call it a day. It's simple. It's maybe an overused trope, but just a little touch of that to 
get that Christian, Christian message in there. Yeah, heck, you know, as you mentioned that, I think a simple choreography that could fix that issue, like have a Bible at the beginning, have maybe the person like not walk in at the same time, but like try to, and they have a Bible, like they're reading the Bible and they notice that they're, oh shoot, I'm late for work. So then they kind of rush in there. They put the Bible down they start doing everything as everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of move. So end of the beginning? No. So <laughs> basically the intro to end of the beginning. But like that type of, uh, that type of intro to it, gives the thought hey this is a christian what they're doing and then you can also throw in like bible reading and sharing God's right with other people even even if you wanted to throw a god character in there or holy spirit you know holy spirit i know holy spirit <laughs> <laughs> how dare you mention the holy right. spirit in mine <laughs> not that we need white sashes for everybody to you know show that the spirit's filling them or anything but just the the nature of like bringing people in and show yeah. that it again giving purpose and direction towards it yeah no that wasn't I would say the direction that Ginger and Jake were taking, which is totally acceptable. Right. But this is just, you know, my, my suggestion. Our critiques, talking, yeah, our thoughts. Nope. As we're talking theology, they can do whatever they want. And of course, when you put it on your own team, you can do whatever you want with it. Right, That's exactly. a great part about all this, you know? <laughs> right, fit it to whatever your lineup needs. Cool. Yeah. All right, we're going to rate it. Clarity, difficulty, style. Style. So you did, you did the style with your hands and not your voice this time. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Trying to be stylistic <laughs> after like 50 episodes. I don't know how many more of these I got, but <laughs> all right. Clarity. Um, other than like, we, we are throwing in our own message of like trying to be really clear on the, the gospel side of things, but you get that the person's different and everyone joins in. I don't know how much clearer you get. It only goes lower because it's simple for me. So yeah. I was going to give it like an eight. <laughs> yeah. What's well, ironic. My exact, that's, yeah. that's exactly my thought. And you know what? I'll give it an eight also right. for the exact same reason. Because literally like that's, that's, that's it. When you think about clarity, it's like, does the message get across? And the answer right. is, well, yeah. Yeah. But also the message was, you know, march to the beat of your own drum of a, of a different drum. You might say, right. You can, you know, do your left, right, left, to your own rhythm, and whatever. And we'll keep on walking or something like that. Yeah. Moving, moving, talking. And There's the different words. So we're not a. Because we're not afraid to, you know, stand. Stop up. making it unclear. But the message is super but yeah, clear. So, <laughs> like the the idea is like, march to the beat of your own drum. That's it. That, that's the that's the message. We got it. Like, yep, you did it. <laughs> but so because here, of its simplicity, here's exactly. where it changes for me. Difficulty is interesting because if you're a dancing team, not hard at all. This is totally within the wheelhouse of like dance studios will do this in like half an hour. It's no big deal because you learn the course and that's really all it is. Um, it has a little mime technique in there too. Where the difficulty comes is in people being having to be unison with each other and the fact that we're not primarily like dancing teams most of the time. Most of the time we are mime teams. And so maybe you can change the choreography if you don't like the dance the way it is and you do something that's more mimey or easier for your team. But I'd say the difficulty goes up for being in unison and for just for the fact that we're not dancers, (laughs) which is a little different because if it was, again, if it was a dance team, the difficulty would rate it lower. But I think because we're not dance teams, probably gonna go like i'd say a seven yeah well it's kind of ironic because like for a lot of the same reasons uh i'm not gonna repeat what you said because i agree totally with all that uh, one thing that i would add also is this is a, a q heavy song mm-hmm. and by q heavy i mean like it has to be like this action has to be done on this beat mm-hmm. not on this word and you get to you get a little bit of leniency it's like no this beat 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 you know right, it's like you got very heavy cues and and the reason why it's so particular for this song is because this song is all about those things being in unison. Right. And uh, the one person having to be different means everyone else has to be the same. <laughs> yes. And so like the the synchronization, the unison, the cue heavy nature of it, like it's it's pretty tough. Now, granted, as much as I say it's tough, I still would give it a seven myself because, yeah, as much as it's it's up there in difficulty i would still say it's totally doable. right that that line that changes the difficulty is just how good your team is at dance and that's hard to to rate yeah. so take that for whatever grain your your team's at as far as dancing metaphors and skills <laughs> yeah and it's funny when i learned the dance to different drum because i had to teach it to a different team at one point i learned it a little bit wrong mm-hmm. because as trying to do dance correct like as i'm watching the video i mirrored some things and didn't mirror the other to mm. mirror others but so, like yeah, it's it dance problems. choreography so like at the end of the day it's kind of expected kind of like other mind choreography change yeah. it do whatever you want make it look good that's that's all that matters yeah <laughs> all right and style i'd say that's a lot of good style uh again no backflips or no like 
Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of intentional tropes, so I can't knock it in some ways. But the dance is fun. Music's fun. I'll give it like a four. Four. Wow, that's very low for like compared to what I was thinking. Because mm-hmm. I was going to go somewhere around a six. Mm-hmm. Because like as much as it doesn't like break any bounds or anything like that, it does like do a lot of cool things and just visually appealing. I would say. Yeah, now, that's kind appealing. of the point of these types. Of it songs. has a good set piece, but like after it being a, a dance song unison, like I don't I, for me it doesn't have much. So I'm probably gonna I'll stick with the four. Yeah, you know. I thought about six, but I'm thinking I might I might lower it to a five because as I'm really trying to think more about it, it really it, does come. Down it looks to, really cool. Like, I'm not you know not knocking it, but as far as what I would consider part of style is like the creativity aspect or breaking boundaries or um, visual appeal. Yeah, it has some new. good visual appeal, but it doesn't have as much of the whole like crazy new things. Yeah, and I think that's really what it comes down to for me when I was trying to give it a little bit higher is because as much as like it doesn't really break any bounds per se. But it did do a lot of like visually appealing things. Like they they looked, they made it look cool, and that was kind of where their goal for it. And I think they did that well. Mm-hmm. Now at the same time, yeah, I'd, I'd probably have to knock it a bit for as much as they did cool things. It wasn't really super unique and outstanding. They did we did poke at them a couple of times for using tropes that they used. Like right, but you know, like tropes aren't bad. Yeah, tropes it, aren't inherently bad. But right, you, and, have and to it, do a different podcast about that. Right, it's like we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, when you use a trope, you just want to be intentional with how you're using it for all aspects. So it works for the way that this song goes. And then when this song is done with its life cycle, you do one that's very similar that uses all the same tropes again. And that's fine. <laughs> so you're sticking with a five? So I think I'm going to go with a five. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, that's our podcast. Links down below and also in the cards at the end of the video. Anything else you got to say for them? No, I don't think so. Mash that like screen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you for all who are supporting us. We feel the love. But as always, I'm Samuel. And I'm Charlton, I think. Yeah, I think I think you're Charlton. Okay. Well, I'm Charlton. Breaking, Breaking the, the line. line. We're gonna march to the beat of a different drum. We do the left, right, left. Woo!